Welcome back to the shop. It's been about two or three days. Uh, no, it's been a little more than that. It's been a little bit, a little bit of time. It's been some time. Um, here's where we left off. We did the spraying of the burst, and it's a little bit. I don't know if it shows up real well on the camera, but it's just a little bit uneven in a couple of spots, and it's in a little too much in the center. So I, what I'm planning to do here is take some 320 grit sandpaper. This is now shellac based. So there's a shellac binding binder of this color. So I should be able to sand that stuff back and even things out a little better than I did last time. Famous last words. But now I'm not super worried. Even if I do have to do it again, I'll know and I'm learning. So um, I'm going to bring you guys in and we're just going to get after it. Might as well, eh? So we're back on our lazy Susan here and sort of sort of on it. It's not staying so good, but back on it. I don't know if you can see, but like right here, there's a bit of a line. And I kind of want to try to work that out a little bit, feather that a little better. Right in here, it's not quite as symmetrical as I was hoping for, so I'm going to try to fix that. But other than that, everything else I'm really pretty much fine with. It all looks really good to me. Um, and if I have to come back and add a little more color after this, I'm fine with that. So, so we'll just uh, we'll start where I know it's safe to start, right here in the center, and we'll see if I can't spread some of this some of this around a little better here, get that opening to sort of open up. Okay. Now, since I don't know how much this will do, I'm gonna check early, check often. Give it some frequent look-see. So it looks like here, here, I can go a little further over on this side. So we'll take a little out of there. And I'm gonna do a tiny bit on top of this to try to even out that line. That line is something I'd like to... Okay, so we do have to watch for gumming as well. So. It actually looks like it's doing a decent job. Yeah. Try to even things out a little bit. There's some dust nibs as well, so try to catch some of that also. And just uh yeah, we've got we've got some nibs going on here. That isn't good. So I'm gonna lose the block. Tear this in half. I'm going to get a few, few surfaces that I can work with here. We are losing the, the block and just going to do this by hand so I can use all the surface area of the paper. There we go. That's better. Might have to do a little touching up right there where I have some rays, some grain rays in there. Try to stay off of that zone. Try not to let the gumming get too severe there. It's all feeling pretty good there. It's all good. So this is coming out all right. We're just gonna go for a nib knock here. Just knock the nibs down a bit. Let's see if we can do that without uh, too much corning. I think that's called corning. I don't know. I thought I heard of it being called that before. Just a little bit here. Light, just barely skimming the surface here. Softening that surface just a tiny bit. Spending very little time there, I'd say. Still a little time right in here. I'm okay with some corning here. I'm going to give it a bit of what fur. Okay. Get you nice and smooth at least. Yeah, I'm okay with what I've got there. I'm going to flip to fresh sandpaper and really zero in on that line area that's bugging me. Try to dial it back some, if at all possible.
There's a bit of raised areas, so there's some light spots up here and a light spot right there that's forming, which I think are just high spots in the grain that my sandpaper's catching. Which are good to catch now. And I'll, uh, I'll mix up a tiny batch of color and touch those up just a teeny tiny bit, I think. Very lightly, keep that corning to a minimum. Yeah. So that's a little bit of figure acting sort of weird there, which is fine. Yeah, that feels good. That all feels good. I'm going to spray it off here. There's some areas that look scratchy, but those aren't scratches. That is grain figure doing that. It's very strange, but it is what it is. And uh, I'll uh, try to even them out a bit here if I can, and then we'll come back with some color right over that area. But this is working well. A little more right in this area. Try to make it as symmetrical as I can. doing pretty well. I like it. I like it. Okay. Blow it off for the dusty. I think I think I can call that 99% color done. I'm going to mix up a little, fill up some of these little spots touch those up a tiny bit um, and then I will uh, work out the next steps. All right, mixed up a half a batch of color. I doubt I will use it all. Um, and we're just going to come back and touch up some of the sanded areas here. Even things out just a tiny bit more. I'm starting with a very light coat here. Try to get it down where I want it. Just evenly cover all that up. Just making just a tiny bit of an effort to keep the color where I want to put the color. Yeah, that's looking great. And only putting out a little bit at a time. Stand it up like this here. Calling you done? Am I going to call you done yet? I think I'm calling you done now. I've called you done 17,000 times. Done for real this time. Yep, pull this color off. We are good with this. All is well here in the land of the coloring. Coolness. All right. I'm going to clean, off the gun, clean out the gun and stuff. Let that dry. I'll bring you back in a sec. All right. So it's had a little bit of time to dry, not a ton, like 20 minutes maybe. But we're good with this burst. I'm done with it. I'm not going to do another thing to it. It's going to get sanding sealer and then a little bit of light sanding. But at this point, I'm, I can pull the masking off the body because I'm not going to be spraying any more on the body anymore. So let's get our body back and exposed. Oh, we are going to have to pull the fretboard tape off. I just remembered I left behind a fair bit of pore filler on this because it was up against the tape of the fretboard. So I am going to have to 
pull the tape off for the fretboard and we're going to have to finish that bit up. There's some sanding to do right up along this edge here, right along this area. Because I was lazy back then, so current me is a little annoyed with past me for not giving a lot of future me consideration. Kind of a jerk to future me here. So, it's okay. We'll make sure that then from the next from now on I care care a little more about what future me needs. Yeah, so that, that fretboard area needs a little more, a little more loving. I think it was because I wanted to just get some progress on the rest of the damn thing. All right, so we're going to remove the masking. So this will take a little bit of time. And I will not bore you with all these details. Ready, set, go fast. Okay, well, the tape is off, but I bet some of you predicted this. How many of you thought this was going to happen? Because it's been on there for several months. You see those lines that are horizontal? That ain't figure. Guess what that is? It's tape residue. It's all, it's all sticky. So what that means is I've got a little bit of sanding or something I've got to do here to get that off of there because it's really bad. I'm pretty sure I can take care of it with a little sandpaper. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to clear off the fretboard so I can do one operation at a time here. seen this thing in a while. Ooh, it's all full of the sticky too. That's all right. Well, I think I might adapt this too. Let's, let's peel this out of there too. It's been in there for a while. Now there's residue on the inside of the dang thing. That's true. I actually can't feel it. It's good. Okay, that's all right then. May have to come in here with the airbrush a little bit there and there, but for the most part, man, I haven't seen this thing in a long time. So I'll give you guys a quick little view here, because I think it's long time ago. Some of you might not remember it either. There she is. Well, it would be played like this. So that's that's going to look really nice, I think. I think that's going to fit really well together. All right, so one thing I want to do, well, one thing I need to do is finish up the, the pore filler because there's like a fillet, a fillet. Yeah, fillet. So you'll see here, see that light line? That's pore filler right there. That was, I sanded up to the edge of the tape and didn't go further because I didn't want to sand through the tape. But now I have to like deal with that. Um, but otherwise, I'm pretty happy with this. This is going to work out really well. So next steps are going to be get that sanded and then also get all the tape residue off. That would be a wise, a wise thing indeed. And now that I don't have, I can't use alcohol really safely because I would mess this color up if I got any on the front. Though if I use it on the sides and I'm careful, it might be okay. I'm going to use it up here and see if I need to be too careful or what. Yeah, let's go get a little bit. I'm going to go grab a raggy rag. A raggy rag, unlike other rags. Oh, no, I'm going to use a... I'm going to use me a lint-free... I'll be right back. Hold on a second. Okay, so we're going to very carefully take a lint-free cloth, some denatured alcohol, and we'll go find a nice, safe zone that doesn't risk my pore filler at all. How about, or risk my, my coloring job at all. But also, shouldn't risk the pore filler either. 
So let's see what this do. Not getting tons of feedback there. Let it flash off and see if there's residue, I guess. Doesn't take too long to flash, thankfully. It does get most of it. It definitely requires some scrubbing. And I would not want this anywhere near shellac. Because it'll just wipe it right off. I also wouldn't want it anywhere near the color layer either. So we're going to have to be much careful. But meanwhile, I get a look at this walnut grain with it wet, which is beautiful. So that's as clear of the goo as I'm going to get it. Um, got a fair bit of it up, but definitely need sanding to do the rest. So get set up for that. I'll bring you back. All right. So I've got a. Uh, I'm set up to sand all this. I'm going to use 400 with a block for most of it. But there's a spot here in this rosewood binding that's flipping out, and uh, I don't want to have to round it too far over. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue in and let that set up a bit. Um, I'm going to grab my glue bolt and a nice thin piece of paper. There is a small, oh, I know, there's a post-it in the CNC here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, this, a nice sleep of paper. And then I can get a little glue on it. Hopefully not too much on the spruce side, if I can help it. Just want to get a little bit underneath it here, like so. And then push it in. I'm just going to hold it with my finger there. Try to get it to uh, set up nice and stay stuck so that it won't snag on clothing and whatnot. Um, I am going to sand it a bit and kind of break the edge, but I don't want to have to, uh, I don't want to have to risk fighting it too much. Okay, that's already holding really well. It didn't take long. It was really thin and it really wanted to lay down any, anyhow. Okay, I'll just hold it there a little bit longer. I think it's still kind of sticking up a tiny bit. Literally waiting for glue to dry. Okay, when I can't tell where it is, we know we've done a decent job of hiding it. And then I can come in with the sandpaper and dial things back just a tiny bit. I'm going to give this just a little bit of a round over. It doesn't need to be quite so sharp. Just a tiny bit. I don't want to have to round it too far, but I do want to break that edge a bit so this um, it's kind of shreddy, the rosewood. It's just kind of prone to the, being a bit shreddy. So we'll try to work within that and make sure there's no snaggy bits. Okay, so we're just going to sand that smooth. Meanwhile, we're also sanding pretty much everything else smooth. And we're also getting rid of that blasted tape residue.
Okay, so I don't know if I said this earlier, I don't think I did, but we are basically now in finish sanding phase because then, uh, well, I might do, um, yeah, I'm probably going to do fret markers on the sides, edge markers. So I'm just taking some 400 here and knocking over this really crisp edge so it fits better with what the fretboard has. And it has the awesome side benefit of getting whatever little pore fillers up in that crisp edge out, out of there. Keep it crisp to the last second though, because that way if it does ding, you have room to play around with. There. That's nice. I don't think I'm going to have to polish that again. I think it's okay. I think it feels good. So the fretboard feels fine. There's a little residue right there. Where's that rag? Hold on a second. Seems like there's enough alcohol on the rag still. Let's go right here. We're good there now. Everything else looks really nice. Frets feel okay. May do a little dress on them. Okay, so this we can do right here. I can do fret markers if I want. Book, 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 book. I think I'll spare myself those. So I have to just uh, I just have to decide whether I want to do them or not at this stage of the game. I'll bring it back when I decide that. All right, so we are going to drill for side dots. I'm going to use white because the brass. I have a feeling in some lighting situations the brass is going to be pretty much impossible to see. The white will not be, so that's why I'm going with that. And it's really small, so it's unobtrusive as well. And I'm going to do third, fifth. 7th, 9th, and 12th. I'm not going to bother with 15th, 17th, or 19th. Mostly because I can't get a 16th inch drill bit way the hell down in there. Had I been thinking, I might have done them sooner before I put the fretboard on or before I put the neck on. But honestly, I'm not going to be playing up there. You don't have access, so it's not a huge... I'm not really worried about not being able to get up that far. So we'll just do 3, 5, 7, 9, and 12. So that'll be 5. And so what I'm going to do to keep it centered on the fretboard thickness is I've got my square set to a distance that's going to basically put a 16th inch bit right in the center. Yeah, that's perfect. And I'm going to just, as far as centering, so the, the location of the dot I want to put basically in the middle between each fret. But instead of going all anal retentive and precise, it's much harder to tell when they're off-center this way than it is when they're off-center this way in the thickness of the fretboard because it's right there. So I'm not too worried there. Um, it's not a... I don't feel like I'm cheating or skipping skipping out. I'm, I'm putting in the necessary effort and not more. Like, I don't want to go overboard with precision on this because I kind of want this thing done. So I'm just going to hold my square up with that 16th inch or so stick out which will get me basically put the bit right where I want it. And then I'll put the bit up against it, eyeballing where I want center to be. I would say that's pretty dang close to center. And we'll, so we'll get our bit right where it belongs, right there. Not quite, we need to come out a little more. Right there. No, somewhere in between those two. How's that? That's pretty good. Now I'm going to spin it so that the flute of the bit is right where I want it. That looks good. Drill. Okay. Just drilling straight in. <sighs> yeah, that looks fine. Okay, that's three. This is five.
Now, I can get ready to put this into those holes. All right, so I brought you around here to show you what I see. So I'm displeased with the position of this one. It's too far that way. So I've got a little bit of the rosewood scrap from the binding job. I'm gonna turn this into some sawdust. I'm gonna fill that hole with some, some rosewood and sawdust, or some sawdust and glue, and fill that hole and redrill it. So I'm gonna pull you back out and I'll do that bit next. All right, little stirry thing. A little bit of glue on this side here. Should be more than enough. And we'll take a tiny bit of glue, a tiny bit of sawdust, tiny bit more glue, tiny bit more sawdust. Oh, there is some, there is some 80 grit in here I can feel. There we go. It must have just been the one rock. Moving locations helped. Okay, so I've got a nice little paste here. It's mostly gluey, sawdusty, juicy goodness. Now I'm going to take it up. I'm just going to slide it into that hole. Try to push it in there. Pack it down in there. I'm going to use the other side of this to sort of send it down. And fill in some more. more. Try to get some way deep down there because I want to make sure that when I redrill the hole it doesn't want to wander on me. Okay. I'm going to call that sufficiently packed. I'm going to squeegee off the top just clear my cut, clear my tools off a bit here. I'm going to let that set up, and if it shrinks, I have some more, and I can make a bit more. So you did not get to see much of that at all, because I didn't zoom in. But I'll zoom you in now, and you can see what I've done. OK, so this is the 12th. This is the 7th. The 9th was right here, and it has already started to dial back. So I'm, I'm going to mix up a tiny bit more with the remaining sawdust I have here. and slide it on top of this and uh, just give it enough so that if it does want to shrink back there's enough on top to kind of cover. Try to keep it off the front surface if I can and that will we'll let that set up and uh, I'll come back and drill that later. Uh, for now the next steps I can do is start cutting my bits for this. So I should have written and grabbed the tools I would have wanted for this. Hold on a second. Ah, here we go. Scissors. Scissors will do the job. So I'm going to move this over. Move this over. I should have some kind of catcher of some sort. Let's use some tape. Roll of tape. I'm just going to cut off some, I don't know, 16th to an 8th inch long stuff and hope they stay there. Oh, it's stuck to the stuck to the scissors and just cut off a few bits that are about an eighth inch long and these will be what get pounded. I will use my mallet to pound them in. There's four and five. Let's see if I can do it in one shot without having to make more. All right, um, we're going to bring back our little glue zone here. Put a little more glue. I think yellow glue is going to be just fine for this task. I'm not too concerned. Um, I do want to go find my little block here, a little hammer. Now, I kind of want some tweezers for this. Hold on a second. I don't kind of want, I do want. I just have to figure out where in creation I happen to keep my tweezers. I know, right here. Found them. They are some messy tweezers, but I do have some, so, all right. So we're going to take one, and it's going to get full of glue. So I'm going to take this one. I'm going to try to grab it on its top side. OK, 
get a little glue on it, kind of position it so that I can get it on the hole. And then tappy tap tap it on in. Beautiful. Okay, I'm going to come back with the rag and just catch the smear. Good, that's in and that glue will dry and that'll be fine. Try to clean the tweezers off a bit. They're a tiny bit sticky from other previous gluing operations. Okay, grab our second one. So it's all basically rinse and repeat. Good, good. Pull the glue away from that polished fretboard. Good, good. Okay, so those are in place. Those are looking great. That one will need to do a little bit of sanding. Let's see how it is right now. Not terrible. Not quite there yet. It's still a little gummy. We'll hold off just a little longer here. But that'll get done. So I'll re-drill that and put a, put a pin in it. And then when they're all dry, I'll bring you back and we'll do the smoothing. All right. So it's evening in the shop. And I could wait until all this is done, but I kind of want more progress. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten out flush these through four and I'm going to let this dry overnight because I want to make sure that the glue is absolutely hard enough to drill off of so that the wood so that I can move that hole nice but the 220 220 sandpaper does a fine job flushing these up no problem at all not a lick of trouble And I'll try to do one at a time so I don't catch too badly. This does just go fairly quickly. That's kind of why I wanted to do it tonight. Just get some more forward progress on it. Oh yeah, white was a great idea here. White's going to be beautiful, perfect right there. That was sticking out of ways. Send it on in, nice and browned, and flush. Last one here, and then I'll do, I'll fix the ninth fret tomorrow, after the glue's had plenty of time to dry. Okay. That's all there is to that. I'll come back after this one's in and then I'll do one last 320 on it. Um, yeah, I just felt like getting that done. White was perfect. It's a beautiful look. I like that. That's going to be perfectly fine. I'm sticking up a little bit still. That will work. So when this is dry, I'll, it looks like it shrunk again. I'm going to put a little bit more. I'm going to make a little bit more sourdust, this time a little finer. I'll use 220. And uh, we'll make up a little more sawdust to fill that a little better. So, All right, really quickly, you saw, I just wanted to do a quick update. I'm about to edit this last bit of footage. So you'll have something to watch soon. Um, I got the nine, the ninth position side dot in. Um, that hole got drilled off the right way, or the cor correctly. Um, and so they're all in, and I flushed everything up and sanded it with 320. There's, I, 
I dare say there's nothing left but to put a finish on this at this point. Um, so that's what we're going to set up for next. I need to get a place <laughs> to do this. I don't want to do it in the shop this time because, well, you saw the cloud. Um, so I'm going to work out a, a better way to uh, spray the finish on. But I just wanted to let everyone know because I did not have uh, an ending clip. So that's what this is, is an ending clip. I didn't want to leave you with me fixing that ninth dot and not say anything. So I could have done a voiceover, I guess. But I didn't, so here I am. Um, so yeah, this is... I'm calling this guitar pretty much done. And... So what I'll do is get it set up so I know some people would, had asked before whether I was going to scrape the binding and purfling off uh, the, the tint off the binding and purfling off the front. No, I'm not because I have a couple of boo-boos that it's doing a decent job of masking for me and it's just, it's, it's okay. Um, it may not be perfect, but... I like that look better than I would like a dinged up thing, and I really, really do not have the energy to fix the purfling on that. So the tie, the die, and it's up right by the neck, so it's not a big, it's not in a really bad spot. It's not the greatest, but it's it'll be all right. Um, so next time you see this, we'll be in the finishing tent of some sort. I have a shed right behind the shop that I'm going to probably put up my finishing tent. You've probably seen it when I did the three. No, I didn't do it when I did the 335. I did it on... Huh, I don't know if you've ever seen the finishing tent, now that I think about it. Maybe a long, 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 long time ago. I have a couple of videos. But anyway, so I'm going to put together the finishing tent, or a finishing tent, um, so that I can spray some stuff. I'm going to use lacquer like I did on the last one. I'll do a sanding sealer and then I'll do a couple of coats of gloss. And then I'll probably do a satin, I think. I'm not sure. Oh, I will have to mask off the, the fretboard and the, and the headstock plate because I do not want to put finish on those things. So I'll do that. So you'll probably see the next step. I'll do a quick little masking off thing and then we'll go to the finishing tent. So anyway, that's it for this one for now until I get ready to finish. Um, get after it.